In the previous video in this series, I demonstrated how far I got with the Z80 computer project. If you haven't seen the videos, I'm designing a, a Z80 based computer, I'm trying to stick to discrete design, so all just uh, TTL logic gates, apart from the Z80 itself and the ROM chips, of course. And it's progressing fairly well. Now, I'm writing a book that's um, part of this project and I need to make it clear that the book only goes as far as um, what you're seeing now. So although there will be a follow-up book in the future, the first book will just detail the circuits that are on this version 3 board, um, the way they work, and also there will be a listing for the monitor program. Now in the previous video I men mentioned this monitor program and I so I'll demonstrate it, but I only showed the help screen and I had a few complaints saying that, well, that wasn't really demonstrating it. Could I do a better demonstration? So the monitor's not finished yet, and I would say it's not just a monitor program. It's the, um, the boot ROM, boot loader, and the basic um, BIOS operating system for the hardware. And of course, the, op the software operating system will uh, put a layer on top of that. But I wanted a fairly uh, comprehensive monitor to be included in the ROM so that I could test the um, computer and also that if anyone's going to build one of these then it's a nice starting point for them to at least be able to do something with it. So when you boot the uh, machine up what you get is this uh, introduction screen and uh, point out here just for reference later in this video that we've got version 1.1 showing. Um, sort of it's darking here, but I'll turn the lights down to try and cut down the flicker on the display. And um, hopefully it will make it easier for you to see and not be quite as irritating. Uh, I do have the serial cable connected. Now the monitor doesn't require that except for uh, when we want to send a file to the Z80, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. So normally when you boot the machine up, the version that you're not going to see at the moment um, will look for a floppy drive. And if it finds a floppy drive, it will try and find a boot disk. If it doesn't find that, it will um, revert to the monitor, and which is what this machine will do, of course, because there is no floppy interface attached to it. So if I now press any key, it's going to immediately recognize there's no floppy drive interface and it's going to start up the monitor. And again, notice the monitor version for future reference. It's version 1.0. And what we can do is call up the help screen, and that shows us all the options that we have for the monitor. So the first one is we can clear the screen, which does what you'd expect it to. The next one is we can dump some uh, of the RAM. So if we do uh, option D, it's asking for a start address that we want to dump, and if we say 9000, then it dumps the um, the RAM. You can also have the hex um, characters showing as well if you want. Um, of course, you can uh, then increment through each block, or go down through the blocks. And then of course, if we want to, we can select a completely different uh, starting address. And this is from uh, address 0, and this is of course our uh, boot ROM itself, starting at address 0. Um, the next thing we can do is edit memory. So if we do a, a quick uh, look at, again, address 9000 100, you can see it's just random data that was in the RAM when the machine was booted up. So it's 0, 0, FF, 0, 0, that sort of thing. But what we can do is edit directly. So it's going to ask for a start address, and again, if we say 9100, it's saying that the value there is 0, 0, which as you can see it is. So we'll put a different value in there. We'll put in uh, 21, doesn't really matter. And then it goes to the next address. So shows us the current value there which is FF, we'll change that to 22 and I'll just keep putting values in incrementally. Okay so we've got a few values and what we can do now is dump the RAM again and see if uh, those changes 
have actually taken place in memory. So we'll dump the same address range. And as you can see, the memory has been changed 21, 22, 23, 24, etc. So if we want to, we can directly edit the RAM and uh, enter small programs. We can also fill uh, blocks of memory with a particular value. So again, start address and we'll fill the same area of RAM. End address, we'll just fill one block. And we'll fill it with a value of, doesn't really matter for this test, uh, 68. Okay, if we now dump that memory, you can see it's now full of 68. It's just that block, if we go to the next, you can see it's just got random data. And if we go back 68 and back before that, again, random data. So that's working fine. Next one, um, we'll come back to the next two in a uh, little while. This is uh, where we can run from a particular address or call a particular address. And also the load file um, allows us to load a file from the serial port. We've got a copy memory block. So if we want to, we can copy a value. Let's go from the start of the ROM. We'll do one block. And we'll put that up at 9100. If we now dump the memory at 9100, you can see that we have the contents that were at the base of the ROM. And just to confirm that, if we dump the ROM value, you can see it is the same. Uh, we can output a value to the ports and that allows us to switch banks for example or output something on the uh, output port. We can print the registers, I haven't quite finished this one off yet, um, I just needed to finish the uh, rest of the registers off. Just done the first one for now but it will show the value in all the registers. can be quite useful when you're debugging. Um, reset the monitor which just does that sets us back to what uh, we started with and then load file. So what I'll do now is send a file from the PC. I'll put the terminal up in the corner of the screen and then what I can do is give it a destination address, address and uh, again we'll send this to 9100 and it's now saying it's waiting for a file. So I'll send it a file So it's finished sending the file. Now this file is uh, really the uh, contents of the ROM. The only thing that's different is when I compiled it, I changed the origin address um, to 9100. So it's non-relocatable -re code because it's really intended to run from the ROM from address zero upwards. Uh, but I have recompiled a, a version and uh, that expects to run from address 9100. So if I reset the machine, um, notice you could just run it straight away, but notice we've got um, version 1.1 of the uh, machine 
and version 1.0 to the monitor. And this is running from the ROM. But what we can do is tell it to run from a different address. And because we now have this second version of the monitor code in RAM, and that's up at address 9100, then we can run that. But notice the version is 1.2, so when I recompiled it so I could tell the difference and make sure it wasn't just crashing the machine and starting from scratch, I changed the version number. So I'll just reset the machine again. So notice it's version 1.1. But when we run from the uh, higher address where we copied the file to, notice that it's saying 1.2. Also, the um, monitor was version 1.0, and it's version 1.1 for the version we've copied into RAM. So this is now fully functional, but instead of running from the ROM, it's running from the RAM and um, it's actually in, re in a relocatable area of RAM so if we want to we could now switch to a different memory bank using the port um, out command. So very useful um, tool for diagnostic, fault finding, writing small programs. Of course we can use that version in RAM to look at the ROM so it's quite a powerful tool and it has all the uh, features you'd expect a, a normal monitor to have. It makes it very uh, easy to carry out tests on the machine. It, the ROM does have other um, functions built into it. It's not just the monitor, it's also the bootloader and that sort of thing. But I won't show that uh, here, that's for a future um, project. So the listing for the monitor is in the book, so if you were going to get the book and build one of these, then you could use that as a starting point, and you can see it's quite a powerful tool. It's especially useful when you're developing software, because rather than having to write uh, a blow ROM every time, or mess about with floppy disks, you can just send the code directly from the serial directly into RAM, and then you can just uh, jump to wherever you've uh, copied the uh, program too. So quite a nice uh, tool to use and as you can see the machine overall is working extremely nicely.